Leonardo Phoenix now has image guidance and style reference. Let's check it out. We're on the Leonardo dashboard. I'll just click image generation right there front and center. The preset is Leonardo Phoenix. There are other models you can use, but Phoenix is Leonardo's foundational model. It does a really good job with a lot of things. It is a great all around model and it does pretty well with text and people and realism. It's been missing a few features since its debut and we are happy to see a couple of those get checked off the list right now. I'm gonna start here in the prompt box by putting in my prompt, which long story short, it's a whimsical fictional car in an idyllic small town setting. The settings over here on the left, I'm going to leave prompt enhance at auto. I'll leave the preset style dynamic and the contrast medium. I think we'll stick with the middle of the road generation mode quality, at least for now. I'd like my images to be 16 by 9 and four variations. Now I may want an image that's a lot bigger and a lot higher quality, but right now this image is going to cost me 32 credits. And if I were to switch that up to ultra and large, now it's going to be 104 credits this set of four images. If I went to fast mode, it would come down to 24 credits. I'm okay with 32 credits at quality. If I end up hitting on something that I like, I can always use the same seed, the same prompt, dial up these settings a little bit, or I can upscale. Going to hit generate because I want to have a sort of a, a baseline understanding of what this prompt would create on its own, and then we'll use a style reference image. Here's the four variations. Let's make those a little bigger. And I think these are very much what I had in mind for my sort of fictional photograph, idyllic small town. Now let's incorporate some style in here. I'm going to come up here to this little picture icon with a plus sign next to it and click on that. And now I can choose from style reference or image to image. Right now, style reference is what I'm after. That's what I'm going to grab. And it's going to ask me what image I want to use as the style reference. So I can upload something new. I can come over to my generations and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab this image right here and confirm. Now, once that's in there, I've got some options. I can turn it off, which leaves it there. It doesn't delete it and make it go away, but it says, hold on to this for a minute. We're not going to use this for style right now. I can hit the X. That'll take it away altogether. And if I wanted to edit back in, I'd have to come click the button, say style, go select the image. Then this drop down here. If I click on that, I can make the strength of the style reference, low, mid, high, ultra, or max. And that's referring to how much of this style do I want in this image. We're going to run all five of these. So I will start with low and generate, and I'll go ahead and set it to run all these other options as well. So this is our reference image all zoomed in. This is the style that we wanted to take from. This bottom row here is what we generated without any style reference, and we already looked through those. With the style reference set at low for that image, these are the variations it came up with. I think you can see the influence of those colors coming in a little bit in the shapes of the fluid motion of the shapes is coming through too, not only in the cars, but notice it in the buildings as well. This row is with the style reference set at mid. And now we're starting to really see a change in some shapes. Look at the back end of this car. Colors and curves also in this image and lots of bright colors, much more so than we had in our original. This is looking like a pretty happy, cheerful place to be. When we kick it up a notch from mid to high, now our style is really starting to take over. This is kind of funny in the grill up front. It has these little tentacles or whatever you call them that were present like these little guys from the original image. This is becoming less and less of the photograph that we had originally generated and it's really assuming the style and colors from the reference image. Check this one out and more of these little, I don't know what they are up in the front in the grill. Lots of rounding, lots of bright colors, the sky and the clouds, even the trees and plants are picking up that color scheme. This one, this is interesting. It first jumped out at me that it had the little arms or whatever they are on the back of this car and then up on the hood, but it also incorporated them here in the flower beds. That's pretty neat. Oh, look, and over here in the uh, flower basket. And then this one, which just has those colors in it everywhere, big bright blue clouds and uh, this arch here on the side of the building. Super cool. How could it bring in any more of the style than that? Well, let's see. That was high. This is ultra and holy moly, we have all kinds of these little fuzzy things coming out of the back of the car, really exaggerated curves that look a lot like what was going on in that fluid image. Look at this building over here, how it gets so many curves and depth and shadows that look like the reference image we provided. Loving the colors. This one is interesting. I'm not crazy about all the uh, fuzzy things going on on the front of the car or the back of the car, really, but it's pretty cool. Look at these bright blue trees and bright red trees or hanging flower pots. I don't know. It's really picking up the style from our reference image. That's for sure. Last but not least, this one. Again, look at these curves and the buildings. We got the little fuzzy arms everywhere and definitely brought in all the colors. This one that looks like it's got a flower box on the side here in this fender, and I'm not sure how 
well that tire would work, but hey. And just when you think you can't go anymore, that's when you have the Max style reference. And it's got a little bit of what we asked for in the prompt. I mean, it's got the fictional car, that's for sure. Maybe the idyllic small town, because it's brought in the street lights and the clouds and the little shops and sidewalk. But the style from our reference image has really taken over in this one. Some of these things look a lot like the structures that were in our style reference. The colors are definitely well represented from our style reference. Look at now these clouds that aren't even like real clouds anymore. We've certainly gone away from photograph style and definitely are into the style of whatever our colorful image was. It is just full on the style of that reference image. So you've got the whole spectrum here, whether you want to completely just take over the image you're trying to create with the style of something else, or whether you just want to add some subtle hints from that style, maybe bright colors, which this first version, the low, certainly accomplished that brightening up the colors and maybe increasing some curves. And then the higher you set it, the more the structures and colors both increase their influence in the image you're generating. Let's try something a little bit different here. I'm changing the prompt to an undiscovered galaxy. I'm gonna click on our reference image and I'm gonna change its strength down to mid. And I'm also gonna come down here and click add more images. So I've added this image, which is just sort of a, I don't know, psychedelic color burst thing. And let's go ahead and add another image. Just come down here and say, add more images. And now I've added this one of a spaceship going through a black hole or something. Now I can switch the influence of this image, but if I change this image to a different strength setting like mid, it changes all my images to that same strength setting. But if I come down here to image influence, this setting is the amount of influence this style reference image will have on the final output relative to other style reference images. So I should be able to drag this one down. Maybe I want it to be weighted at like 0.2. And then if I come over here and click on this fill, He's still at 0.5. I can move him down. Let's make him 0.3. And then let's grab this one and pull it down and make it, I don't know, what do you think? 0.1? We'll just have this one have a little influence because we've already been dealing with the, these bright colors a lot. So I've got the bright color set at 1. I've got the psychedelic design set at 0.3 and a little bit of the spaceship deal coming in at 0.2. Now let's go ahead and click generate. All right, here's our images of the undiscovered galaxy. I'm definitely seeing some of the colors from the first image. I'm also seeing that scatter that was in the second style reference image we provided. And then I'm seeing a little bit of that pink, purple, black coming through from the third image that we provided. So you can add multiple images for style reference, and then you can weight each one as to how much influence you want it to have relative to the other images. All right, now let's try image to image. I'll come up into the prompt box and over on the left, I'll just click the little plus image icon and then I'll click image to image. It wants me to select. I'm just going to drag in an image from my computer. I've got this car here. It's warning me that the image dimensions cannot be matched. It really likes it when those dimensions match, but it's not the end of the world if they don't. We're going to do a couple of things here. First, let's go ahead and drag this up to 0.9. I'm going to switch prompt enhance to off because I want to try a really short prompt and I don't want it to get changed by the auto enhancement. So I'm just going to say a car, hit generate, putting it at 0.9. It created an image that looks almost identical to the style reference image. Let's see what happens if we leave that strength at 0.9 and we say a 2025 Corvette Stingray parked on a beautiful golf course. And with the 0.9 strength, it seemed to ignore the rest of our prompt and just give us the car that we started with. That's okay. Hey, we're learning. Let's go ahead and drag this down to about 0.5. Run it again. 0.5 didn't help. Let's take it down to 0.3. Now, obviously, this is a fairly clean image with a white background. I could just do a background removal and then put this car in any environment that we wanted to. But I'm using this with image to image, image guidance to purposely see if it will start to break away from some parts of the image and do something different. So reducing the strength, we started off at 0.9, bringing that down to 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and even 0.1, it still only generated really that image with very subtle variations, not much difference at all between those. When I let Leonardo enhance the prompt and make this big, long, detailed prompt with lots of specific details, then it started to make some changes. And this is with the image guidance set at 0.10. With all of this detail, it was able to figure out that it could brush over the golf course 
source and still have this on the white background and I guess respect the image that was supplied as the image to image reference. Now, if you didn't want this white background, you could work on this more either in the canvas editor within Leonardo or start with the image that you like the most out of here and do another image guidance, image to image reference and try and get it to work its way on out to the edges. But like I said, the easier thing to do if you wanted to get this car on a golf course would be to just start by removing the background from this image and then have your golf course image put those together maybe in the canvas editor and then you could either upscale that or use that newly assembled image as an image to image guide. All right, I'm going to switch to a different image now. I'm clicking the little image plus button up there. I'll click image to image. I'm going to grab this guy here. We're going for kind of an 80s vibe. For this prompt, I'm going to say after school in the living room, 1980s. I'm going to leave prompt enhance on auto. That way Leonardo can go ahead and make that prompt a lot better than what I have the words to come up with. I have the strength for this image to image set on the default 0 0.30. And I forgot to look for this match aspect ratio for best results. One thing I like about this is if there is a match, you can just click this this little match button right here and it'll go ahead and switch it over in your settings so that you don't have to go hunt for it. So I'll go ahead and grab that and generate. This is our first set of images that came from our image to image using this as our image to image guidance with a strength of 0.30. I'm definitely getting an 80s vibe from these images. I don't know what's going on on the TV. And it's even pretty similar in the layout. We're looking into the corner with the couch. It's changed up a whole bunch of stuff. And this is the set where we use the 16 by nine ratio. Look, we've got a TV here on the floor and a TV up here, and neither one of them have anything showing on them. Now let's take a look at how it performed when we gave it the same dimensions. I feel like these are a little bit crisper, but I'm definitely getting an 80s vibe from these pictures. Now with this image, it seems like it didn't quite incorporate enough of the original image, but we did only have it set at 0 0.30. So we could bump that up maybe to, let's say five and see if it gets any closer to our original image. All right, here are the variations. Pop this up. It turned our guy in the corner into a couple of lamps, it looks like, on a chair. That's weird. And then our fella here disappeared and now it's just a, a plant and a book bag where he was. This variation, we got rid of this guy. We turned this one white and put some rabbit ears on him. Well, at least we ended up with two people in in this image, it got a lot of the structure and the layout colors in the right places, but it did change a lot. We bumped it up to 0.5, so that's to be expected. It's still letting the AI have, what, 50% creativity over generating this image. Definitely, we can see it's going in the right direction. And if you wanted to get closer to the original, we certainly have evidence that bumping up that strength is going to get you there. You know, I was a little bit concerned when Leonardo was acquired by Canva. Sometimes these things happen. A startup company or a small company will become part of a bigger one and then things just sort of fall off and the attention isn't there anymore to that smaller unit. But I'm really happy to see that Leonardo is continuing to add features and expand things and make the platform even better. It's already a great platform generating images and editing images. And I'm really glad that they're keeping up with it and doing good things. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate you hanging out with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.